Hello and welcome to the Fits and Healthy Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Fitzgerald, and today I have a great episode for you. For those of you that don't know me, I am a medical doctor that was Western medicine trained. So you see the MD on my white coat right here. That means that I went to Western medical school. I went to medical school in San Antonio, Texas. I spent four years there in medical school, four years in residency training to be a, an anesthesiologist. I practiced medicine for six or seven years and then left practicing Western medicine full-time to help people in their health and fitness. So I am a health and fitness online coach, and that is what I do full-time. And so today's episode might be a little controversial, um, but I want to start off by saying, yes, I am a medical doctor, but I'm not your medical doctor. And you need to find a medical doctor that aligns with your own belief system um, and what you want out of this life. <laughs> and so I'm going to get more into detail about what exactly I mean in this episode. So let's start off by um, addressing one thing. Uh, there's going to be a major change in the Fits and Healthy podcast um, because I've had the realization that my expertise of being a medical doctor, also being a fitness professional, I've taught group fitness since I was 16. So that's over 20 years, almost 40 years old. So I've been in, in the fitness world for a long time. And then the amount of books that I've read, the amount of research that I've read, and the amount of study on my own that I've done post-medical school and residency when it comes to nutrition and supplementation, all that kind of stuff. I got a lot of stuff in this brain. And I realized that the, the crisis of health, not just in the United States, but all over the world, is only going to be combated by giving this knowledge that's potential power, okay? So my job on this Fits and Healthy podcast is to give you a ton of information. Now, if some of you are like, oh yeah, I want you to coach me, awesome, message me, that's, what I, that's how I get paid. I get paid by giving my services of using all the tools that life has given me to help people learn how to reverse all of their health problems by doing a natural means in combination with a doctor that is like-minded. Okay. So why, Lauren, are you saying all this? Well, I'm glad you asked. So a few days ago, I, I posted a picture of me in my scrubs with my white coat. And I said all of these things like, if you have a doctor that tells you that your diabetes is a chronic progressive disease that cannot be cured, then you need to fire your doctor. If your doctor tells you that your hypertension is always going to require a pill, fire your doctor because here's the deal. There are so many diseases that you guys are walking around with that actually can be reversed, if not reversed completely. But I will tell you this in traditional Western medicine, in our, in our medical schools, we're not taught any ways to heal the body naturally. And I didn't realize this, but most medical schools are funded by big pharmaceutical companies. We in medical school, a majority of us MDs and DOs, so that is Western medicine, that's allopathic medicine, okay? Most of us have maybe three hours of nutrition, if that. I did not have any nutrition in my medical school, and th that is actually more common. So I was definitely that doctor that heard about, um, and I say air quotes, doctors like chiropractors and uh, naturopaths, and I poo-pooed the idea that they had any value because I was taught in the culture that I was raised in, and this is very, very common, and not too many Western medicine doctors actually talk about this out loud, but we're taught that we know best and they don't know what they're talking about. And it might not directly be said, but that was just always a common understanding. So I literally never opened my mind to the possibility that technical difficulties, but we are back. What I was saying uh, roughly 20 seconds ago when our Zoom cut out on us was that in traditional Western medical school, we, we are not taught how to to treat the body naturally. We're taught how to prescribe drugs, do procedures and surgeries to correct diseases that are already there. But there's no, um, there's no classes that teach us, well, for the people that don't want to be on that purple pill the rest of their life or that hypertension medicine the rest of their life or the multitude of diabetes medicines the rest of their life, 
this is the approach that you should take. And I will tell you this, there is always going to be a place for Western medicine, always, because a majority of people just want a pill. Okay. That that's the reality of it. People, when, when they're given the option of, okay, well you have to change your lifestyle to get healthy. So you don't have to be on these. Most people will be like, ah, eh, nah, doc, I'll give, give, give me the prescription. I'll just do that. Okay. I respect that because at the end of the day, I can bring a horse to water. I can't make him drink. I will tell you this. And those of you that follow me pretty closely online, I've, I've told this story multiple times. I used to be an anesthesiologist in this pain clinic. And once a week I, w- I would be in the pain clinic and I would, I would put people to sleep while they were getting these procedures, you know, needles in the neck, needles in the back, um, all sorts of different procedures that pain doctors do. Right. Um, and some of the patients have chronic diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. Now, for those of you that don't know what rheumatoid arthritis is, it's an autoimmune disorder that is debilitating. And, um, it, and we're going to later, we're going to talk about the whole topic of epigenetics and I'm, I'm going to do my best to not, I'm going to talk geeky, but I'm going to talk to you in a way that you can understand what I'm talking about. Because ultimately, if this applies to you and you are motivated to change your health and you don't want to be on a pill the rest of your life or that idea of maybe I don't have to be, um, this, this episode is for you. Okay. But if you're the person that's like, no, no, no. If you're going to tell me exercise, nutrition, and supplementation are the only way that I don't have to be on this, then I'm good. You, you can stop listening right now. Okay. Cause this, you are not the person that I'm meant to help. I'm meant to help the people that want to take control of their health so that maybe they don't have to be on whatever said medication the rest of their life. And I'm not here to promise you that all of you have that that potential possibility. Some of you might be too far gone, and we will talk about that. Um, But the fact is that in this pain clinic, um, I saw a lot of people in chronic pain. And rheumatoid arthritis is one of those that is a debilitating disease where your body creates its own attack system against the joints in your body. And literally the medicines that rheumatoid arthritis patients are on are toxic, toxic. So, and this, and granted, remember I told you at the beginning of this episode, I do not practice medicine anymore. I left practicing medicine three and a half years ago and have not regretted one day because I am in my purpose, giving all of the information and tools in my brain and my life experience to help people that are motivated to take back control of their life. So before I left practicing medicine, I would constantly give people advice and I would, I would typically steer them to a, a free resource, right? A free resource that I think is a great place to start. It's called the Whole30. A lot of you may have heard it, but it is a, it's, it's one of many, honestly, elimination diets. Um, and I hate to use the word diet, but it's an, it's an approach to doing an elimination nutrition option. Right. And what, what does that mean, Lauren? I'm glad you asked. Don't you love the fact I don't have a co-host with me today. So I'm, I'm talking to myself. Um, the fact is that there are lots of foods that are inflammatory that cause a person, um, to have a reaction in a way like autoimmune disorder. So what we do with a standard elimination diet and the whole 30 was so great at, um, figuring out how to market it to, because out of all the elimination diets, that's probably one of the most popular. They've got a great website that's free with free resources. And I would send patients there all the time. Can I tell you how many patients actually went there and tried to do an actual whole 30? Probably three. I know it, it, it still blows my mind. Um, I know so many people just with rheumatoid arthritis alone that I've had this discussion with, but at the end of the day, you have to choose your heart and yeah, it, it's hard to change your lifestyle and it's hard to get rid of the diet sodas and the, the sugary sweets and the fried foods and the, the whatever other foods and toxic things that are in your environment. Yeah, it's hard, but is it harder than dealing with the pain that you're living with every day? At the end of the day, you have to choose your heart. I can't. So I'm here to give you information so you can do with it what you want. 
But there was one lady, she was in her young 70s. And I remember I, I saw her on average, I believe she came in like every six weeks. So, so I got to know my patients in the, the pain clinic, that, which is kind of atypical for anesthesiologists because typically it's a, a one and done. And every now and then you'll have a repeat patient that will be like, oh, I took care of you how many years ago. But for the most part, anesthesiologists don't create a patient relationship bond like surgeons do or primary care docs do, right? But in the pain clinic, I actually created relationships with a lot of these people because they, they kept coming back. And um, this this one lady, I don't remember her name, but she, when she saw me, she broke down in tears and she said, Dr. Fitzgerald, where were you when I was 37 years old and first diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis? Because my life would have been totally different if I would have had you in it. I'm like, right there, right there. That's powerful. Because if, if someone would have told her at 37, Hey, why don't you try and cut out a few of these foods that are inflammatory? You might get some results and you might start to feel better. Her adulthood would have been totally different. And, you know, I look back on, on my own journey, which is way less serious. Um, but I, in, in my 20s, I was 27 years old and I tell this story often, but, but it's a great example of um, the point that I'm about to make uh, with epigenetics. So um, epigenetics is basically you're given a set of genes and, and so many people are like, well, I've just got fat genes or I've just got Alzheimer's genes or I've just got whatever. Um, yes and no, because your genes are like switches, right? And they, they're given to you in the off switch. So let's say Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's, y'all, I'll be honest with you, I'm scared to death that my mom is going to get Alzheimer's and I'm going to get Alzheimer's. I don't have kids of my own. I don't have anyone to take care of me. I will take care of my mom. If that happens to her, I'm praying to God that we caught her soon enough and change her nutrition and supplementation and everything else so that she doesn't get it. But if she does, I, I'm going to take care of her just like I've watched her take care of my grandmother. Right. Um, but the genes that are given to you don't have to be turned on unless there is something in your environment that turns them on. So the gene for melasma, melasma is the medical term for hyper sunspots, hyperpigmentation on your skin, right? So my gene for melasma was turned on and it was slow, okay? But it was turned on when I was put on birth control pills when I was a teenager. I was not sexually active, but I was put on birth control pills because I had bad cramps. I totally disagree with that decision, um, but that's what so many of us are taught when we're, we're trained in medical school and residency. Um, I was on birth control pills for 10 years and the gene for melasma was turned on. And so I started getting these tiny little sunspots, right? And they were cute at first. They kind of looked like cute little freckles. And then they, over time, they got so bad that this PACU nurse in San Antonio, they speak Spanish in San Antonio. She was like, mija, you've got some dirt on your face. And I'm like, no, no, mama. I'm, I, this is, these are just the sunspots from my birth control. And so that was the moment that I decided to get off of birth control. Now you're like, wait, Lauren, why are you telling me the story? Okay, there is a point to the story. So after I got off birth control, my hormones went bananas, bananas. And I had, I had adult acne for the first time in my life. And I was surrounded by OB-GYNs. I was surrounded by surgeons. I was surrounded by medical people every single day. This was in the middle of residency. And not a single person even suggested, hey, why don't you try and cut out dairy. See what, what happens with that. I mean, it can't hurt. I mean, you're considering going on a really strong drug called Accutane. Yeah, that's right. I ended up having to go on Accutane. I didn't have to, but I, I chose to because that was my only option. I had done the, the topical stuff. I had done the, the pills for the spironolactone for um, the acne and nothing was working. And so I, I went on Accutane. That, that is some, I wouldn't, oh, I, I so regret putting myself on that. It cured it, but there's long-term damage that was done from that, that just nasty drug that I, I hope no one goes on. Um, but the fact is that it's not Western medicine doctor's fault because we're not taught, but I do believe that now the day that we live in, especially my primary care doctors, um, you have an obligation to learn 
all the options that you can give your patients. And I realize that most of your patients are going to want to come to you. And when they tell you that they, they can't get it up for sex for, you know, whatever they want, they want Viagra, but they don't want to hear, well, you know what? you could actually change your diet and exercise and supplementation and the blood flow that goes down there will actually return. They, they don't want to hear that. They just want the magic pill. And I, I get that. And that's why there will always be a place for Western medicine doctors, always. But um, the fact is that disease processes like diabetes actually can be reversed and be reversed as long as you maintain the new lifestyle that you have learned. Now, I want to clarify this, and someone posted this on my Facebook post, and I, anytime I talk about diabetes, I always make sure that I educate people. There is a difference in type 1 to type 2. And when I speak about reversing, it's always talking about reversing type 2. Type 1, we still, in medicine, we still are not 100% for sure what makes a person become a type 1 diabetic. But the difference between a type 1 and type 2 diabetic is that type 1 all of a sudden their pancreas just stops producing insulin completely and you can't live without the hormone insulin. You just can't, you will die. You will waste away because there's no way for the cells to get the energy that you're eating. So people that have type one oftentimes are super skinny, right? Until they're diagnosed. And then this is a common phenomenon that we see with both type one and type two is that the moment that we start putting a patient on insulin, they gain weight. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Well, let me talk about root causes. So type one, type one diabetics. No, you cannot reverse your, your type one diabetes. It's not possible. You will always need some sort of insulin, but I will tell you this. I have headed up two different 12 week beta test group where I, I, along with a couple of other people help people learn how to do exercise, nutrition, and supplementation, and we change their nutrition completely. We don't follow the standard eat a low fat diet. We don't say, well, you can eat, you know, don't even get me started. And I'm not here to, to put down other weight loss programs like, well, like Weight Watchers. But the fact is that um, all of the fake foods and processed foods and the low fat nonsense has gotten us to where we're at right now. And that's still what they're teaching in, in nutrition degrees and in, in medical school and, and all of that. Like that's, that's the advice that I was giving to my patients because I, not just patients, but my, my colleagues. And I, I told this story. So Sean T interviewed me um, a couple of days ago on his Instagram about intermittent fasting. And I kind of told, uh, I quickly told my story about what got me into learning about all of this stuff that I didn't learn in medical school. And it was because I'll be honest with you over the years when people have come to me, because remember, I've always been into health and fitness, like nutrition has not always been my jam. Like I, my nutrition was literally what I learned from the freaking magazines. I'm not even kidding. Um, so I would read those all the time. Um, I, I love the gym. I've always been a weightlifter. Like I, I, I love exercise. That, that's not a habit that I needed to learn how to do. Um, and supplementation is always something that I've seen my, my parents model. So I've always believed in it. But it wasn't until I was 33 or 34. And, you know, all these people that come to me for advice, I can't help but think that they're not doing what i I've recommended because they're obviously not getting results, right? But when the advice that I was giving to other people to just eat less, eat a low fat diet and exercise more, when that wasn't working for me, I had to step back and be like, what the hell? I, it was a video. It was my turn down for what video. And at that moment in my life, I, I was wearing the, the first rendition of the I Heart Hip Hop tank tops, the pink tank tops. And I was with uh, two of my friends that were both wearing, or all three of us are wearing the, the pink I Heart Hip Hop tank tops. Um, it's an awesome video, by the way. You should go check it out on my YouTube channel. Just saying. Um, but I'm looking at it. And at that moment in my life, I was teaching four classes and I go balls to the wall, y'all. Like my class, like I take pride in the fact that people get sore from my class. <laughs> <laughs> my class here at NIU, <laughs> I'm, I'm double their age because they're college students, right? And man, I, I'm not going to lie. I kick their asses. It's awesome. But I, all that to say is that I, my class is not your standard dance fitness class. I, I mean, it is a crazy, awesome workout. Not to say that the standard. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but in addition to those four classes, I was spending four to five days 
in a seven day week in the gym, lifting weights and going hard. And so I'm doing exactly what I'm telling people to do, but I'm continuing to gain weight. And I don't understand why I see myself in this pink tape top and I look, I'm not happy with how I look because I know what I'm doing and it's, I, 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 I know it's not working. That's when I started to learn about how food really is medicine and um, I, how fat actually isn't bad for us, the right kinds of fat. <laughs> um, the whole concept of, well, type 2 diabetes is, um, is reversible, like completely. If you teach a type 2 diabetic, I don't care how high their hemoglobin A1C is, uh, and that was someone, uh, so a, a, another, I don't know if she was a, a primary care physician or a PA or a nurse practitioner, but someone left a comment um, that that I, I definitely want to address. Um, but she she was like, you know what? It, you you can't expect for someone that comes in with a hemoglobin A1C of 13 to not think that they will never have to be on medicine. And I'm here to tell you, yeah, it's completely within their, their potential, depending on how soon they catch it. If they have been type two diabetic for so long, then yeah, it's going to be harder to reverse. But man, if we can catch them in the earlier stages and get them to learn how to maintain this healthy lifestyle, which is a hundred percent maintainable. This is why I don't believe in quick fixes. The only way to be your healthiest and happiest is to make a, a daily habit of exercise movement. And I, I don't mean go balls to the wall seven days a week. You need a rest day, but my rest day, I'll walk my dogs or I'll go take a yoga class or whatever. Like our bodies were meant to move. This is the first time in the history of human beings that most human beings just sit all day. I work from home. So I literally, I am walking around my home. I'm trying to be not sedentary and sitting and working at my computer. Um, so the fact is that if we can teach them how to make exercise a daily habit, if we can teach them how to make good nutrition a daily habit, and if we can teach them how to supplement so that we can fill in the gaps that even the best nutrition can't fill, absolutely. A type 2 diabetic caught in time can reverse that hemoglobin A1C and keep it maintained so that they don't ever have to be on medicine. I've seen it. The, the two different beta test groups that, that I, I helped do, the, over 700 people in both of them. And we had people get labs before and labs after. This, I 100% believe in the power of a person that wants to take control of their own health and fitness. Um, hypertension, absolutely. I, I, was, I was not born to believe, but trained to believe in medical school and residency that essential hypertension. So that's the, the, the diagnosis that, you know, medical doctors will put if, if that's what, the, whatever, that that's just the genes that you're born with. But I have seen time and time again, that people that are given that diagnosis, if they change their, their nutrition, their supplementation and their exercise appropriately, they can get off of those medicines. But like, I, and I, I won't, I have a one particular patient that, that comes to mind um, that has the exercise down, um, but doesn't eats pretty well, but doesn't want to give up alcohol. And I'm pretty sure that giving up alcohol would make it where that patient wouldn't need to be on hypertension medicine the rest of their lives. But they, but they don't want to. So they'd rather take a pill and that's cool. I, it's, it's their life, right? But if, if you're like, no, I don't want to take pills and I don't want to deal with all of the, the long-term because let's just face it and any person in medicine can vouch for this. Type 2 diabetics, they don't get better by the traditional approach of treating them. The traditional approach is, well, you're told you're, you're borderline, so we'll start you on metformin. And then depending on how bad and progressive their disease is, they'll be started on a second medicine and then maybe a third medicine and then they'll go to insulin. It's never, oh yeah, good. You're getting better. So now we can take you out. Like it, that's the traditional approach. And it's just, it's literally, I, I wouldn't wish long-term chronic progressive disease that diabetes is that we know it to be on my worst enemy. But guess what? It doesn't have to be that way. And I, if it were me, that hard is way harder than changing your habits. And I wish that everyone could go and walk on a hospital ward so they could see with their own eyes what end-stage diabetes looks like.
you, you lose your fingers, you lose your, your toes, you lose your feet, you lose your sight, you lose your mind. Alzheimer's has been called type three diabetes. You get strokes, you have heart attacks, you have like, literally it's essentially what it is. Diabetes is you are rot from the inside because you chronically have high sugars. So we're putting a bandaid over that problem by just giving you more medicine, but it's not helping anything. We're not getting to the root of it. Well, the root of it is our insulin, right? So if we can approach this and do some, some tactics that we know will reverse the type two diabetes. Oh my goodness. And even the type one diabetics that have been in the, the past beta test groups, they have all told me that the amount of insulin they need has decreased. So type ones will never be able to cure their disease. They will always need to take some sort of exogenous insulin, but type two diabetics, I urge you the sooner that you can get on the healthy and fit bandwagon, the better likelihood of you being able to reverse it and keep it reversed. So the same thing with thyroid disease. I 100% believe that, that that light switch of epigenetics, that gene that makes it where you might have Hashimoto's, so low thyroid, where your body attacks your own thyroid gland and our thyroid gland produces the, horm the thyroid hormone, really important important for metabolism, right? Um, everyone knows if, if you, if you have excess weight, the first thing that you ask your doctor, can you test my, my thyroid? Cause you're just praying that it's, it's a thyroid problem. So you can take medicine. Guess what? Look, I, I realize that not every single person that, that watches or listens to my podcast is going to hire me as a coach so that I can coach them through these processes. But if, if you're just like, give me one thing that I can do, dude, just cut out gluten and grains and see what, what happens. It doesn't happen overnight, but I will tell you this, that if you can stick to just that one change, I think a lot of, not I think, I know a lot of you would realize that, oh, my, the amount of thyroid medicine I need is a lot less, but you have to be very in tune. If you're, if you're one of the people, the, the people that I want to help, the people that I want to help are the ones that want to help themselves, okay? If you're one of those people, you also have to be aware that if you are type two diabetic, if you have thyroid disease, if you have hypertension, if you're going to trust me and make the changes that I'm going to coach you to make, I'm telling you right now, you have to be careful because the dose of hypertension medicine that you used to need is all of a sudden going to start to be too strong. And so now a blood pressure medicine that keeps your blood pressure at 120 over 80 you know, that's always the number that people think of when they think of, of normal blood pressure, all of a sudden is going to drop it a lot more. And maybe one day you're going to be like, Oh, I'm kind of lightheaded. I'm not feeling too well. Well, we check your blood pressure and now your blood pressure is like 95 over 50. And, and like your, your blood vessels haven't auto regulated. So they don't know what to do with blood pressure that low. So this is why it's so important for you to understand that if you are one of the people that want to take control of your health, and not rely on Western medicine the rest of your life, then you have to be aware. And it's so good to work with a doctor that is Western medicine trained, but Eastern medicine minded. And so what does that mean? That's always kind of how I've described myself now at the stage that, of life I'm at. Um, that means that can I treat you with Western medicine, you know, prescription drugs, I can tell you what procedure you need or what surgery or whatever. Absolutely. I, I, I could go back to practicing anesthesia. Oh, that sounds miserable. I would never want to do that. Um, just getting back in Western medicine sounds miserable. Um, but the fact is that you come to me as a patient and of course I don't treat. And so I, I don't have a practice anymore. I don't have patients anymore. I have clients that I coach and I always let them know, look, I'm a medical doctor, but not your medical doctor but I am not practicing under a license. I am just a health and fitness coach that has a ton of tools that I can use to help people. Okay. So you come to me, you want my help having oversight with a doctor that knows how to naturally treat you while being able to manage your Western medicine drugs is super crucial. Um, I, I, there's two different websites. There is functionalmedicine.org. And then I want to say it's, I think it might be integrative medicine dot 
medicine.com, but you, you want to find functionalmedicine.org is typically the place that I send people. Cause literally you type in your zip code and it, it shows you within however many miles. So like, if you want to put a hundred mile radius, right, it'll show you all the different doctors that have this extra functional medicine training, which is above and beyond the normal medical school and residency, because, you know, every single doctor goes to four years of medical school and they get their MD or DO, right? Um, and then after that, they have to do a specialty, right? And so you either do family practice or internal medicine or anesthesiology or general surgery or whatever. So that's your residency and that's where you train in your specialty, right? So functional medicine is an additional training and it trains you how to approach disease processes with a natural approach. A great uh, doctor who is Western medicine trained, but Eastern medicine minded, her name's Dr. Sarah Gottfried. I'm going to try and get her on this, this podcast because I have recommended her book, her books to so many people. Um, but she has a book called the 21 day hormone reset diet. And she addresses all of the foods in a systematic approach of how to eliminate these foods that may or may not, and more times than not may, be making you have hormonal imbalance. Because a lot of you that have weight problems, it's not because you're lazy. It's not because you're not exercising enough or eating too much. It's because what you're eating is giving your hormones the signal to basically be all jacked up. <laughs> hormonal imbalance is literally at the root of so many weight problems. In my opinion, it's at the root of a majority of weight problems. But we we keep thinking that this whole caloric deprivation, well, I'll just eat 1,200 calories a day or 1,500 calories a day. You guys, there's zero scientific evidence that that actually works. In fact, what we do have medical research backed information about is that if you decrease your calories over a certain amount of time, it decreases your basal metabolic rate. So it's different than fasting. So this is why like the whole, I talked about this when Sean T interviewed me. Um, there are no biggest loser reunions. Why is that? Because they all gain the weight back. They all initially lose the weight because they're put on severe caloric deprivation so the, re, their, their daily caloric intake is reduced big time. And then they exercise a lot. And so they initially lose weight. But what they do for long term is they decrease that basal metabolic rate. So ultimately, they're, if, let's say that they had to, their typical basal metabolic rate, they burn on their own 2,000 calories without doing anything, without exercise, just their daily activities, sleeping, walking, breathing, 2,000 calories. So you've, you've put yourself on a caloric deprivation diet over amount of time and you've decreased that basal metabolic rate. So now you naturally only burn 1,600 calories baseline every single day. And that's long-term. So that's why caloric deprivation diets don't work because <laughs> they don't address the root problem that it's a hormonal imbalance. And insulin is one of the most important hormones that we're talking about. So let's get back. So we talked about diabetes. We talked about thyroid. And we talked a little bit about hypertension. And um, I want to tell a quick story. Um, and actually, Chris is about to, to come out with his own story. But um, the fact is that high blood pressure is one of those silent killers. And um, you oftentimes you don't get symptoms before um, it hits you and it can hit you hard with a stroke or a heart attack. Um, but I a hundred percent believe that a lot of high blood pressure can be reversed, especially if you get it in time. Um, again, though, like for example, um, <laughs> in the, especially in the first few weeks of the two different beta test groups, I let the people that were on diabetes medicine and hypertension medicine be very aware that the dose of medicine that they're taking, they, it's probably going to need to be halved. But of course, I'm, I'm not their medical doctor. So they have to do this with their functional medicine doctor or whomever, right? Um, but it almost inevitably happens to every single person that was in the beta test group that had high blood pressure that was taking medicine for it or had type 2 diabetes that was taking medicine for it. Almost all of them had to get lowered their dose almost instantly. You guys, the, the resetting your insulin sensitivity, literally one of the best things that you can do is intermittent fasting. 
intermittent fasting, there are so many benefits. And this goes against all of the bro science that I've read in all of the health and fitness magazines for years. But you don't have to be a medical doctor or a scientist or, or uh, I, I don't know. You, you, you don't, this is for me, it's common sense because think about it. If you believe in God, I believe that we were perfectly designed by God, the universe, a, a greater being, right? That perfectly designed us. Okay. Humans have been around for two and a half million years. So if we were really meant to eat every two to three hours, do you, do you think that all of the species, all of the humans that lived before refrigeration and um, uh, all of that kind of stuff would have lasted this long? No, right? It, I, I believe that God created us to feast and fast, right? And so that it makes sense with this, this sugar burner versus fat burner. It's, it's the two compartment model that I talked about when Sean T interviewed me. Um, you think about your sugar burning as your refrigerator, your refrigerator has all your, your fresh food that you eat for energy every day. But if you have like we did the, the polar vortex and you don't want to get out of your house and you've eaten all the food in your refrigerator, you go down the basement and you get into that deep freezer and you use that for your, your food, right? That's your energy. So our fat stores are just that, right? So we are meant to go in and out of this sugar burning stage to fat burning stage. We're not meant to always stay in the freezer. So those of you that are like, oh, keto is the answer. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. And in fact, I've seen so many people jack up their hormones because yeah, I promise you, you will lose weight on keto right away. And then you stay on it a little bit longer and then you'll start to lose your hair and then you'll start to have irregular menstrual cycles and then your GI tract will be jacked up. Like if you knew how many people that did real keto, so a lot of people that say that they're doing keto are actually doing high fat, low carb, which I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of high fat, moderate protein, low carbohydrate lifestyle with intermittent fasting. Um, but I'm telling you right now, if we just get back to nature and what, what humans did before Western medicine, we might get back to being the healthy way that we were, right? But never in the history of humans have we ever seen an obesity ep epidemic like this. We haven't seen a, a cancer epidemic like this. We haven't seen autoimmune. Like we have to, to wake up and realize that what we have been doing for the last 50 years has gotten us here. So we need to get back to the basics and stop eating fake foods, stop eating processed foods, stop eating processed sugars, start working out more. Um, and it's not easy. And this is why I decided to do the coaching thing full time, because I realized that people that are on my OR table were on my OR table, no longer present tense, were on my OR table. I kept having the, the feeling of, man, if I could have only gotten to them years ago, they wouldn't be here. They wouldn't need this surgery. They wouldn't have these medical problems. So to the people that it's, you're not too far gone. You're type two diabetes. You've only had the diagnosis for three to five years. And there's no magic number. Like, well, I've been type two diabetic for 20 years. Am I too far gone? It's hard to tell, but what would it hurt to try and change your lifestyle? Because if maybe, maybe you can't get off of all diabetic medicines the rest of your life, but if you could decrease it from four to two, wouldn't that be worth it? And be able to get off of insulin and stop having a, to prick yourself or inject yourself with a needle every day. Wouldn't that be worth it? Uh, yeah, for me, it would be. If, if you didn't have to live taking a purple pill every day because of your acid reflux, why would you not? So I'm here to tell you that if, if you don't have a doctor that, that helps you that, because, and you know, I hate this because we are at such a terrible place in, in medicine in the, in the United States, because doctors, because of insurance companies are forced to, to minimize the amount of time that they spend with patients. So I realize it, it, this is another reason that I got out of medicine, to be honest. Um, but they, they, they're only given so much time that they can spend with patients. But if you are a physician, a Western medicine physician, I beg of you to start learning. Like there's a great doctor named Dr. Jason Fung. I talked about him um, on the, the interview yesterday or two days ago. Um, he, he runs the intensive diabetic management center up in Canada. And he has 
thousands of patients that he has helped reverse their disease processes thousands. He's gone against conventional medicine and he's all over the years, he's gotten a lot of grief from it. But the fact is that he is changing these lives all over the world. Now he actually has telemedicine where he can consult people, but he always starts them with intermittent fasting. And oftentimes he'll add actual fasting. So his book that I talked about um, on the interview, it's called the complete guide to fasting by Dr. Jason Fung. I highly recommend it, especially if you are suffering from type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance, um, which there's a large majority just in the United States that are suffering from insulin resistance. So I could talk about this topic for a really long time, but I don't want to give you too much information where you're just like, okay, Lauren, too much, my brain overload, so I just give up. I'm just going to whatever. What I want you to take away from this is that knowledge is potential power. And if you can combine with someone like me and then someone that is functional medicine trained, people like us can really help you change your life forever. Did you hear what I said? We can legit help you change your life forever. I'm 100% confident that I can come into a person's life that's struggling with learning how to maintain well, not just maintain, learn what a healthy lifestyle is, get them off of the quick fixes because we all know quick fixes don't work. I don't know how many times you guys are going to have to try the latest fad, the latest potion, the latest wrap, the latest whatever, and finally realize that those don't work. Let me teach you how to regain your health, regain control because it is at your fingertips. But at the end of the day, you have to choose your heart. So go to functionalmedicine.org, find a doctor that's functionally medicine trained and let them know. Like if, if you have 11 different drugs you're on, that's cool. They're not going to take you off of all of them at first, but they will. They'll look at you and be like, okay, well, I think that we need to start here. And our goal is to try and get you off these. I'm not sure if you're going to ever be able to get off of these medicines, but we're going to do our best because I have a a motivated patient. (laughs) That's the word I'm looking for. Motivated patients are what I, that's, that's who I I was craving to help when I was practicing medicine. And it was very disheartening because so many people just want a pill or surgery or whatever. And, um, and I'm telling you right now that nothing good in life comes easily. Yes. It's going to be hard. It's not going to be a, a, an easy road every single day. There's going to be days that you're going to feel like you're a badass and you're a, the king or queen of the world. And then there's other days that you're going to fall off the wagon. But if you surround yourself by a community that's all on the same path, that's led by someone that really cares, like myself, you ultimately will end up much better, healthier, and happier. And that's, that's why I do everything that I do whether it's my YouTube channel and my dance fitness, my podcast, my, my, my live broadcast. I Zoom with a lot of my coaches and clients. Um, everything I do is literally to empower the person that wants to be empowered. So that being said, I thank you so much for all of your support. The love that I got the other day when I was on Sean T's Instagram interview for him or on his uh, IG live, it literally was overwhelming. I I, I truly cannot um, thank everyone enough for all of the kind words. It was so much fun. Um, I'm looking forward to talking with him again. I'm going to France next month. Um, And yes, it's it's a work trip. My life does not suck. I love my life. Um, And and we're going to dance together. And I I think that we're probably going to do one or two more episodes together. I'm going to see if he'll, I bet you anything, he'll let me interview him for the Fits and Healthy podcast because he's got an amazing story. Um, His book, Transform, Tran- wait, transform yourself. No, T is for transformation. I've, I've recommended that to quite a few people. It's an amazing book that you should a hundred percent check out. But, um, bottom line is you can let your past define you, or you can define who you are by changing everything today. So right here today, Lauren Fitzgerald, Dr. Lauren Fitz is here to tell you that I believe in you and I want you to know how amazing you are, how much greatness inside of you. And I want to help you learn to love the life that you live. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. Share it if it was helpful and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. 
I appreciate your time listening so much. If you enjoyed this episode of the Fits and Healthy podcast, can you please go do me a favor and go subscribe at whatever platform that it is that you listen to podcasts. Leave a review. We read every single review and we appreciate the time that you take to leave your thoughts and opinions. Now, also remember, while I am a medical doctor, the information I provide here is not intended to provide medical advice or a professional diagnosis, opinion, treatment, or services to you or to any other individual. I am providing general information for educational and informational purposes only, and it is not a substitute for medical or professional care. You should not use this information in place of a visit, call, consultation, or the advice of your physician or other healthcare provider. The information I share is not intended to treat, cure, or diagnose any disease or medical condition. If you believe you have a medical emergency, just call 911 immediately or your physician. Now, enough of that medical legal jargon. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I appreciate your time. Now go live a fit and healthy life.